welcome to this second video on link analysis. We will talk about PageRank, a network centrality measure that was introduced to tackle the web search problem. So how do we identify high quality search results when looking for information on the World Wide Web? The answer is to take advantage of the network structure of web pages. At the end of the previous video, we noted that hyperlinks between pages turn the World Wide Web into a directed network and a hyperlink is an endorsement of the target page. Therefore, a high quality page will have many inlinks. We then use a recursive definition of importance where links from important pages should count more than links from less important pages. We encountered this feedback loop concept before. Sociologists have been using this for decades at vastly smaller scales in their study of power and influence in social networks. PageRank was introduced in 1998 by two graduate students at Stanford University. You can tell how excited they were by their generous use of exclamation points. Sergey Brin and Larry Page probably win the prize for the most lucrative PhD dissertation of all time. Within two years, their superior search engine and minimalist aesthetic claimed victory in the search market, beating out other established companies like Yahoo, Lycos, and AltaVista. So let's talk about the actual model that Brin and Page introduced. We are going to start with a simplified version that I'll call the voting model. Then we will adjust this model so that it works on directed networks. We treat a hyperlink as a vote for the target page, and we define the importance of a page to be the sum of its in-link votes. But we must make two adjustments to the weight of these votes. First, the weight of a vote is proportional to the importance of the source page. So a link from a high-scoring page gives a bigger boost to its out neighbors. Second, that importance is divided evenly among the out neighbors. If a web page has 10 out neighbors, then each of those neighbors gets one-tenth of the page's importance. As you can see here, to get the new importance of a vertex J, we sum over all of the vertices I that link to J. And vertex I contributes its current importance divided by its out degree. We can also write this in matrix form as you can see here. And we should note that we are using A transpose during this matrix multiplication. This way we are summing over in neighbors rather than out neighbors. Let's look at one update round in this voting model. Here's a directed network on five vertices along with its adjacency matrix. The matrix that encodes our update rule is A transpose times D inverse, where D inverse is the diagonal matrix whose entries are one over the out degree of the vertices in the network. And so the rows of this matrix correspond to the in neighbors of a vertex, and the columns correspond to the out neighbors of a vertex. Let's start with an initial vector where all the vertices have importance equal to 1. We'll check that the new importances that we get are the ones you can see here. So let's put a vector of all ones here. And let's pick the third row and see that we get the right value. So I'm going to multiply this row by this column. And what I get is a 1 third. And that is corresponding to the vertex B giving one-third of its vote to C. The next one we see is a half, and that corresponds to vertex D giving one-half of its vote to C. And finally we see a one, and that corresponds to vertex E giving all of its vote to vertex C. And when I add up all of those values, I get 11 over 6. So let's talk about what goes wrong with the voting model in directed networks. So the first problem is a sync vertex, which is a vertex that has no out neighbors. The importance in a sync leaks out of the network, which leads to whole areas of the network with zero values. The second problem is a periodic trap. In this case, vertices B, C, and D form a directed cycle. And once I enter this directed cycle, I never leave. Furthermore, the values in this directed cycle have a periodic behavior, spinning around every three steps without ever converging on a stable value. 
We can fix both these problems at once by changing our update rule. We assume that every vertex has an inherent importance. This is equal to 1 over n, where n is the size of the network. The new importance score of a vertex is a weighted sum of the importance of its neighbors and its inherent importance. The key is to pick a meaningful value for beta. This is a trade-off. The feedback loop is what gives us meaningful values, so we want beta to be large. Meanwhile, the inherent importance keeps us from getting stuck, and so we don't want that to be too small. Google found that tuning the value to beta equals 0.85 worked pretty well in practice, and so that's the value that they used. This brings us to a nice interpretation of page rank. Instead of looking at the update rule as a voting model, we can think of it as a random walk on the web. We have a user who is visiting a series of web pages. Most of the time, the user clicks on a random link on the page that they're on. But occasionally, the user just enters a random URL and jumps to that page. The equations governing this random walk are identical to the equations we obtained for our voting model plus self-importance. The figure shows an example trajectory of this random surfer. And in this case, the solid edges represent links and the dotted edges represent the random teleportations to another page on the network. And so here we start at page A, we follow a link, we follow a link, we follow a link. At that point, we teleport. So we just go to another random page on the network and then we go back to following links for a little bit which we do, and then once again we decide to move randomly and begin clicking links once again. This update rule is used for every vertex J, so it's convenient to write this in a matrix form where we can talk about all the vertices simultaneously. And in this case we can see the transition matrix, and that's just equal to P transpose is going to be A transpose uh, D inverse, and this is the transition matrix that we saw when we talked about random walks on networks. So all that is left to do is to look at the long-term behavior of this system. We will take the page rank vector to be the limiting vector of this random walk process. And this process does converge. We can do a little more work to frame our random surfer process as a Markov chain and use standard techniques to prove this convergence. And for completeness, here are the two matrix equations that we can solve to find the page rank vector for the network. Finally, let's compare page rank with the other feedback centralities that we talked about in the videos about algebraic centrality measures. In eigenvector centrality, our new score is the sum of our in-neighbor's scores. In Katz centrality, we take a weighted sum of self-importance and the sum of our in-neighbor's scores. In page rank centrality, we also take a weighted sum of self-importance and neighbor scores, but this time those neighbor scores are prorated. Rather than receiving the full importance score from each in-neighbor, the vertex receives its fair share. That is, when a vertex passes along its importance, that importance is divided equally among the out neighbors. This concludes our discussion of page rank. In our next video, we will talk about the HITS algorithm, which takes a slightly different approach to ranking web pages. The HITS algorithm notices that there are two distinct roles that a vertex can play in a directed network. The algorithm identifies hub vertices and authority vertices, and then creates a feedback loop between those two roles.